In the verdant highlands of Ethiopia, amidst the bustling markets and gentle hills of Harar province, a boy named Chapu knew the joys of freedom. Born in 1548 under the African sun, his innocent laughter echoed across the land that cradled his early years. But as tender shoots of life may suddenly wilt, so did his fortune. The brutality of slave traders ripped him from his roots. Chapu, now a commodity, faced a destiny of bondage. Through his tale of struggle and survival, we shall see how the chains that bound his wrists would eventually forge a scepter in his grasp. The vast waters of the Red Sea presented a gateway to varied destinies, where cultures clashed and merged in the relentless exchange of human lives. Chapu, torn from the womb of Africa, witnessed the full spectrum of human cruelty amidst Yemen's thriving slave markets. This dark epoch served as a crucible, tempering his spirit for the remarkable journey ahead. In the throngs of despair, an unshakable resolve took hold, foretelling an odyssey steeped in fortitude and resilience. As Chapu's odyssey diverged, Baghdad emerged as an unexpected harbor of enlightenment. Placed under the tutelage of Mir Qasim, he began a transformative process. Here, baptized with knowledge and a new name, Ambar, he imbibed the subtleties of statecraft and the arts of war. Each lesson etched deeper into his captive heart, a quest for liberation, to outwit fate's cruel hand. The wisdom gained in servitude would one day steer empress and sculpt a ruler. The land of India beckoned as the next canvas for Ambar's destiny. It was in the service of Chengiz Khan, regent minister of Ahmad Nagar, that he alighted upon nascent opportunity. Ambar's acute intellect and unwavering loyalty began weaving into the tapestry of this foreign court. Under Khan's discerning gaze, Ambar absorbed the essence of power and influence, his ascent on the horizon as courtly roots stretched deep into fertile soil. In Ahmednagar's gilded halls, Ambar's fidelity shone like a beacon as he navigated treacherous tides of court intrigue. With each deed and decision, Ambar scaled hierarchies, a testament to his strategic prowess and acumen. Loyalty was his rudder, guiding him through tumultuous waters toward shores of influence and respect. His saga was not one of silent obedience, but of crafting a foundation upon which his monumental legacy would stand. Upon the receding tide of Chengiz Khan's life around 1594, Ambar stood unfettered, his servitude dissipating into history's folds. Asserting newfound autonomy, he forged a band of mercenaries to command. With brass and blade, he confronted adversaries great and formidable. Yet it was, from the embers of these early clashes, that a leader was anointed, one who would raise armies strong enough to challenge an empire. In the shadow of the great Mughal Empire, Malik Ambar's influence rose like a defiant citadel. By the dawn of the seventeenth century, he stood as a bulwark against imperial expansion, a shield for the Deccan Sultanates. As regent of Ahmadnagar, Malik navigated the turbulent political waters with the astuteness of a seasoned mariner, fostering alliances and instigating revolts to deter the Mughal of Yatan. This once enslaved African's journey ascended to echoing chambers in Indian halls of power, where he became an unwavering symbol of resistance. His resilience mirrored the fierce independence of the region he now safeguarded, boldly answering the question, how might one man defy an empire? Under Malik Ambar's command, a composite force, unseen in diversity, Amasad, Habshis, Fellow Africans in India stood side by side with Maratha warriors, sworn to Ambar's banner. Over fifty Thulunde soldiers enriched by varied martial traditions, but united under his strategic vision, bred a military mosaic singular in its form. The profound respect he commanded across cultural divides crystallized into loyalty, cementing his power. Ambar infused his forces with innovative techniques, leveraging both terrain and militant intellect to disrupt greater powers, 
Behold a leader whose vision painted the canvas of unity upon an array of fragmented hues, crafting an army reflective not only of his skill, but his inclusive ethic in leadership. In a twist worthy of legend, Malik Ambar, a man once shackled in bondage, sculpted kings with his own hands. With shrewd inclination and loyal backing, he placed two princes upon the Nizam Shahi throne. In the intricate dance of power that ensued, Malik assumed the role of regent minister, becoming the de facto sovereign. A political chess master, he manipulated court affairs expertly, never forgetting his roots or yielding to complacent pride. This former slave transfigured into an unassailable force, an African in India, who bent destiny itself to his indomitable will. This was Malik Ambar, the kingmaker. Amidst the siege initiated by Mughal powers, Malik Ambar found an ally in the stoic Chand Bibi, herself a legend, who governed with grit and grace. Their alliance was a testament to Malik's skill as both warrior and diplomat. Employing guerrilla warfare, Ambar harassed colossal adversaries, rendering their numbers meaningless amidst the Deccan wilds. Horsemen struck like specters before melting away into the landscape, a tactic conceived through his visionary military doctrine. Not mere skirmishes, but strokes of artistry that harassed and hobbled the mighty Mughal forces with relentless precision. Malik Ambar's vision transcended warfare. He was a pragmatic architect of national vitality, laying foundation stones both literal and metaphorical. He established Kirki, later to be Aurangabad, and erected the unyielding Janjira fort upon an island hard against the pounding sea. He forged rivers into canals and arid dust into fertile fields, rejuvenating commerce and agriculture in Ahmadnagar's sultanate. A leader who conceived monumental works and shaped administrative reforms, this African-born sultan infused resilience into infrastructures as enduring as his memory. In a union blending personal ambition with political foresight, the daughter of Malik Ambar united her fate, with Sultan Murtaza Nizam Shah II through marriage, a weaving of destinies that sealed his legacy within the fabric of India's royalty. The corridors of power resonated with tales of this match, both love story and strategic masterstroke ensuring his bloodline continued to course through these ancient lands. Through such personal alliances, Malik fortified his influence across generations, merging his lineage with the nation he had come to, reverence as home. As the breadth of Malik Ambar's influence widened, his capabilities as a sage of the Sultanate blossomed. More than a military mind, Ambar's political gamesmanship came to the fore when he backed Shah Jahan in a move against Nur Jahan, thereby showcasing his sway within Mughal politics. His actions were not merely decisions of the moment, but also the foundation stones of a legacy that would echo through the annals of history. This African statesman was no pawn. He was a player, a pillar, with the political craft to manipulate the chessboard of South Asia's power struggle. Ambar's reach extended beyond the Deccan Plateau, influencing empires and emperors, proving that his once shackled hands now steered the course of mighty kingdoms. Ambar, facing adversaries like the formidable Mughal general Khan Khanan, displayed a resilience that stood as testament to his steely resolve. The stakes were high, and failure meant the crushing of his sultanate's sovereignty. Yet Malik Ambar was undeterred, presiding over victories that resonated within these ancient lands. The seizure of Ahmed Nagar Fort standing as a testament to his resolve. These were triumphs over turmoil, not just military successes, but symbols of defiance against overwhelming odds. The man shackled in his youth now forged chains of solidarity and strength that held fast against an empire. In battles charged with the fire of cannons, and the clashing of swords, Malik Ambar's legend grew ever larger. With strategic acumen, Malik Ambar cultivated a mercenary force that surged from a mere thousand to an imposing seven thousand men. 
His wisdom in warfare fused with an unparalleled ability to invoke loyalty and commitment amongst his troops, embracing a diverse array of soldiers in his cause, united in their respect for this transcendent leader. His military intelligence wasn't just about expanding ranks, but also about harnessing capability to challenge formidable adversaries like Emperor Jahangir himself. His force, diverse and dedicated, stood as a bulwark against incursions, their commander, former captive, turned grandmaster of military might. Here lay the empowerment of men and material, ready to change the destiny of kingdoms. The magnitude of Malik Ambar's sovereignty was further underscored as he repositioned the capital to Junar, altering the very framework of his realm's geography and politics. From this nexus of power, he laid the foundations for what would become Kadki, ultimately known as Aurangabad, a beacon of his enduring vision. Beyond conquests and court, Ambar became an architect, where stone and policy alike shaped a resurgent domain under his stewardship. It was in these newly minted corridors of power that Malik Ambar's presence could unfurl completely. From soldier to sovereign, his legacy now etched into the very land that once bore witness to his bondage. As the twilight descended upon an illustrious life full of turmoil and triumphs, Malik Ambar engaged in significant military campaigns, including those during the Kandahar Wars. At the age of seventy-seven, an epoch in itself, Malik Ambar passed peacefully, having written chapters in history through both iron will and sharp intellect. This was not merely the closing chapter of a man, but also a testament to the idea that great legacies are built on perseverance and the ability to harness potential against insurmountable odds. As this giant among men succumbed to time's unyielding march, he left behind not just memories, but monuments, tangible expressions of an indelible mark etched forever into history's expanse. Malik Ambar rests near a Sufi shrine, a final tranquil abode contrasting sharply with a life fraught with ceaseless struggle and stratagem. His son Fateh Khan's tenure paled in comparison with the vibrancy of his father's rule, brief and ultimately marking the decline of their sultanate's influence. But this context cannot diminish Ambar's epic story. His legacy not merely survived but thrived, influencing countless generations. They remember an enduring figure, an enslaved African who reshaped his fate and birthed a reign in India against unimaginable odds. He didn't win every battle, yet he conquered barriers most thought impenetrable, securing his place as one of history's most resilient rulers. In Malik Ambar's narrative lies inspiration, a testament to the indomitable human spirit, an affirmation that one's origins do not dictate their destiny.